Hey there, Rockstar, and welcome to the five things I wish I had known about Long Arm Quilting Masterclass. My name is Holly Ann Knight of String and Story, and it is my job to guide you to quilt with confidence. Now, as we get ready to jump in here today, I do encourage you, if you have it, to go ahead and grab your confident long arm quilting workbook. There's a notes page in the back. Some of what we're going to be talking about today is also addressed in your workbook, so you can take notes on those pages. And if you don't have your workbook handy, no worries. Grab a pad of paper, grab your phone, just something. So if you want to take notes, you have that handy. And without further ado, let's jump straight in. This, of course, is five tips I wish I had known about long arm quilting. This is a lighthearted and informative hour or so in order to help you make the most of your big investment. I, of course, am Holly Ann Knight of String and Story, and I'm so excited to guide you through some of these tips and tricks that have made a really big difference in my long arm quilting journey of quilting for myself and quilting for others. Now, often long arms on a frame are talked about as though they are this magical solution that's going to solve all your problems when it comes to finishing your own quilts. And don't get me wrong, I love my long arm and I quilt on it a lot, but it is not uncommon for me to find rock stars who have long arm frames that are kind of serving as an overpriced quilt rack and have realized that the dream that they were sold probably at the quilt shop, uh, quilt show, um, of this just kind of fixing everything with no kind of further time and learning investment, um, they, they've realized that this, this big old machine is a little more intimidating when it's in your house than maybe it felt on the show floor. So over the next bit of time together, I'm going to share five tips to help you move from anxious to amazed at all you can accomplish with your long arm quilting machine, all right? Now, if you are brand new around here, give me just a second to introduce myself. As I mentioned, my name is Holly Ann Knight. I have been quilting since 2017, uh, specifically free motion quilting. That's really what I specialize in doing and teaching. But of course, I do a lot of things in the quilting world. Um, and I've watched thousands of quilters just like you grow in their confidence of free motion quilting, of long arm quilting, of quilting with rulers through my blog, workshops, and digital courses. Now, I've recently also become the proprietress of String and Story on Main. That's where I'm sitting. You can see another angle of this shop here. Um, this is a boutique sewing and quilting studio in downtown Duluth, Georgia. And we carry Paintbrush Studio solids, Orifil thread, various notions, and host frequent classes and events. When I am not at the shop and not online with you, I'm probably hanging out with my cutie little family. This is my hubster, John, and our boys, Jim and Ian. We live right here in downtown Duluth um, with our amazing dog, Havana. If you come visit String and Story on Main, you're probably going to meet her. She is usually at work with me. We also have two cats, two fish tanks, and I love just hanging out on the green. Um, or if I'm at home, riding my Peloton. All right, so let's jump in. You're in the right place. This masterclass is for you if you've made the leap to invest in a long arm, but it is either sat in the box or sat in the corner gathering dust. It just feels a little bit too big to be allowed. You're really not sure how to get started. And it certainly hasn't been that magical solution that you thought it was going to be. Um, you desperately want to finish your own quilts, but you're feeling overwhelmed by the nuts and bolts, right? Maybe you've played around with your long arm a little bit, but you're just really not feeling comfortable with the basics yet, and you're not really sure how to get there, all right? Um, or maybe you've tried some basics on your long arm, but you're feeling pretty stuck in a rut and you just really want to fine tune and feel confident that you're doing things well and start to build your skills to the next level. Now, one more uh, category of rock stars that I would add to this slide as well is you're also in the right place if you're seriously considering buying a long arm and you're trying to do your due diligence before actually making that big purchase. I applaud you for that. Um, and just know that everything that I'm going to talk about today, I think is going to contribute to that decision making process. All right. So before I dive into nuts and bolts, tips and tricks, I always find that if we're going to learn something new, it helps to have a goal, to have a vision, to have a dream that we're working towards, right? This is because, as we'll talk about a little bit more in just a moment, our brains are really freaked out by new stuff. New stuff feels threatening, it feels dangerous, and that's what can lead to that feeling of overwhelm, right? So we've gotta put something out in front of us that is worth a little bit of temporary discomfort. And in the case of learning how to use your long arm, there's probably a particular quilt that you had in mind when you bought that, that frame, right? Maybe you were in the process of piecing a really big, really special bed quilt that you're like, I just, 
I can't bring myself to think about sending this off. I really want to do it myself, right? Um, or there's something, maybe it's not a huge quilt, but it's just something particular that you're wanting it to have your touch to it start to finish, all right? On that pad of paper in your workbook, in your phone that we talked about at the beginning, I want you to just write a couple of sentences about that quilt. Why is it meaningful to you? Do you have any ideas of how you want to quilt it? If you could kind of wave a magic wand and have all the skills that you need, what would the quilting on that quilt look like? All right. So as you're watching, go ahead, hit pause, write for a couple of minutes, and then come back and we'll hit these tips. Because here's the biggest takeaway that I want to just absolutely sear into your brain today. You can and will be a long arm quilting rock star. You have already learned how to do so many more complicated things than long arming. You just need a little bit of guidance along the way. Okay. Now this is that part that I mentioned a second ago, your inner mean grump. That's the part of our brain that's freaked out by new stuff. Okay. This is sometimes called your inner critic or your little prince, the mean girl inside your head, right? There's a lot of ways that we can refer to this voice. Um, around here, we call it your IMG. It's the inner mean grump. And there, this part of your brain, as I'm talking about you being a long arm quilting rock star and how you can absolutely learn and master this skill and you can feel confident and excited about using that big old machine. This voice has probably said something like, <laughs> yeah, right. How can I be a free motion quilting rock star if I can't even work up the guts to plug in that machine? But I just started quilting and like I bought this machine at a show and just like there's no way that I'm going to be able to figure it out. Right? That voice loves to feed you negative stories that tells you you can't do something. All right? And your IMG is trying to keep you safe. Okay? It shows up and gets really loud at moments like this when you're trying to learn something new because it's this, sometimes we call it our lizard brain too, right? It's deep in your brain. This is the part of our brain that when, you know, way back in history said, that's a cheetah, you should not let it catch you, right? You should run, right? You should get up a tree, whatever. I don't know how to get away from a cheetah. Y'all get the idea, right? This is the thing that keeps you from putting your hand on a hot stove because you're going to get hurt. The thing is, learning how to quilt with your long arm quilting machine is not a life-threatening situation. It's a little uncomfortable. Learning something new can be a little uncomfortable. Sometimes as grown-ups, we feel a little bit embarrassed about not knowing how to do something. Um, we may feel a little bit embarrassed of like, oh my gosh, I made this big investment without even knowing how to work this machine, right? I'm going to need you to just kind of look at your IMG and say, thank you so much. I know you're trying to keep me safe. I am in fact going to be okay. I'm going to make that quilting dream come true that I just wrote about and just ask it to, to take a little break. Be like, you go get some coffee and let me like try this for a minute. Okay. Your IMG is lying to you about your inability to do things. All right. So just say, you know, I, I'm, thank you. I'm good. I'm going to carry on with learning this new skill. Okay. Let's jump into these tips. All right. We've dismissed our inner mean grump said, please go take a coffee break. We have set a goal in front of us. If we want to be able to quilt this amazing quilt, let's talk about five tips to begin to baby step our way a little bit closer to that goal than we were just eight, nine, 10 minutes ago. All right. Tip number one, your machine was meant to be used. I know that feels really obvious, uh, but there's a chance uh, there, there's a chance that you're telling yourself like, I'm going to break it. Okay. The chances of you doing damage to your machine is really, really low. I know it's a big investment. I know you might feel a little bit afraid that if you hit the wrong button, it might spontaneously combust, but it's really not going to do that, okay? Remember when you learned to drive, and we have that feeling about cars the first time we get behind the wheel. We're like, oh my gosh, like the whole thing's just going to burst into flames, right? But just like a car, your long arm is built to last. It is a very durable machine, okay? The whole point of our time together today is to remove barriers between you and finishing those quilts. Being afraid of your machine and being afraid of breaking it is a really big barrier. So let's talk about how to care for our machine as well, okay? Let's think about how to have fun with it instead of being just absolutely frozen with fear, all right? So I want you to think about there's all how you have those just for fun quilt tops, right? That you just piece a bunch of scraps together because you're enjoying it. Um, or maybe you're just trying to like practice a little skill. It may or may not get finished, right? 
I want you to have some long arming projects like that as well to acquaint yourself with this machine. Um, we tend to affectionately name our sewing machines and we name them because we have a relationship with them. You're starting a new relationship with your long arm and it feels a little bit intimidating. And the best way to break through that, it's kind of like those silly icebreakers that make us laugh, right? It's a form of play, okay? So pick up a couple of random panels, either from the back of your stash or from your local quilt shop. Um, some of those squares you pieced just because and let those be a fun thing to break the ice between you and your machine, okay? Tip number two, I'm gonna need you to learn to recognize a time-lapse video. Now, remember when I said that it can feel like a long arm is going to be a magic wand for fixing your quilting problems? Uh, time-lapse videos do absolutely nothing to dispel this myth and they can really feed our inner mean grump, okay? So we've all seen them, they're really fun to watch. You know, it's 17 seconds and someone has worked from one side of the quilt to another doing this really complicated thing or they've done this really complicated situation inside of a block. It's absolutely mesmerizing. We tend to leave comments like, oh my gosh, I could watch this all day, right? But here's the thing, and this is where time lapses get dangerous, okay? I recently made a video um, and I was working at real speed, okay? And then I sped it up. Now, I long arm quilt quite a lot, right? We do long arm quilting for clients here in the shop. It is not uncommon for me to long arm three, four, five, six quilts in a week, okay? So I'm very familiar with real time on a long arm. I added a clip to this video and I increased it to eight times the usual speed. And my brain didn't feel any kind of way about that. I watched it knowing it was eight times faster. And my brain was like, yeah, that absolutely is the speed that machine moves at. Right? Even though I knew it was horrifyingly fast for long arming. Okay. Long arming on a long arming to finish your quilts is faster than working on your domestic machine right? It is easier to move that machine than it is to push and shove a quilt and control little small areas as we work, right? But it's not because we're working at super speed, okay? You're saving time, not having to rearrange the quilt so much, etc. But in order to be as efficient as possible on your long arm, you don't need to move super, super fast, okay? Now, listen, here's the pros of long arm quilting. This is part of what does make it more efficient you're moving something of a consistent weight and resistance, right? Moving that machine is the same every time. So as you're moving it around, you build up muscles. Those muscles get stronger every time you long arm. It becomes easier and easier and easier to confidently move your machine, right? It's a little bit different working on a domestic. The weight of what you're moving changes a lot based on the size of the quilt. Um, the intricacy of your design is really going to change how often you're having to rearrange that quilt. There's a lot going on there, right? You're also using larger muscle groups when you long arm. So when we long arm, we're using things like biceps and triceps and our deltoids. And those are all really big muscles. And so they develop nicely and they get big and strong and we can work them a lot. Okay. When we're working on our domestic, we're using a lot more of our forearm and our hands. Those are smaller muscle groups. They get tired more quickly. Okay. Um, unless you're a rock climber and then we're just not going to talk about your forearm and finger strength because that's a different conversation. Right? So as a general rule, using these larger muscle groups is also going to lead to a faster finish because you're going to have less fatigue. Okay. You also have a wider range of scale working on a long arm. You've got the whole kind of depth of your throat and width of your frame in order to move things around and make really big motifs, right? My average McTavish on a long arm versus my average McTavish working on the domestic in terms of length, right? Um, so that also can lead to you actually just get the thing done faster because you're not doing as many stitches. Your quilting is not as dense. All of these things contribute to long arming indeed being a bit more efficient than quilting on your domestic. But the real secret sauce to efficiency on our long arm is not hyperspeed. That's not even any of the things that we talked about. It is having good posture. It is taking care of your body as you quilt. The more you take care of your body, the more you can stand at your long arm, move that machine, and move yourself up and down the frame. All right? Good posture looks like having a stacked body, right? Our knees, hips, and shoulders are all in a line stacked one on top of another. Our head is stacked on top of our shoulders. It's not way out here. It's not way back here, right? Stacked body. Relaxed knees. 
You don't want to lock your knees out. That's going to restrict blood flow through your legs. That's really, really bad. Please don't do that, right? Stand softly and firmly, shoulder width apart in front of your frame, all right? Engage your core. This is part of what's going to hold that body up. Have your spine tall at the back, and then have your arms at that nice 90 degree angle as you're working. This is going to ensure that just like we talked about on the previous slide, you're using those larger muscle groups and using them efficiently. All right. Good posture is the secret sauce that's going to keep you feeling strong and capable while you long arm. Poor posture will sap your energy and muddle your quilting. P.S. If you're going to quilt for a long time, get some good anti-fatigue mats as well. Having a softer surface to stand on um, and also investing in a good pair of shoes. Both of these are going to support your feet, which is going to affect your joints all the way up your body. Um, I made the mistake one day of quilting for quite a long time in very flat shoes on a very hard floor, and I was in much pain afterwards. Please don't do that to your body. Take care of your body. All right. So we've covered your machine is meant to be used. Your chances of breaking it are very, very low. We want to make sure that we take good care of it by brushing lint out, etc. cetera. Uh, but on the whole, it is not going to spontaneously combust. All right. We've talked about taking good care of you, the long armor, and making sure that you're being efficient by maintaining good body posture. Next, let's talk about taking care of the quilt that is on the frame. With tip number three, get yourself a batting hammock, okay? Now, let me actually step back just a little bit. Um, unless you are working with a computerized long arm from day one, I recommend you start by floating your quilts, okay? So this means that you put the backing on rollers, but your batting and your quilt top actually just float on top and we use a basting stitch to attach them to the backing. This means that you're only putting two bits on to the rollers, the top of your backing and the bottom of your backing. Um, and you don't have to fiddle with absolutely all the rollers. In my experience, all the rollers is part of what makes that frame feel intimidating, okay? So we can reduce that down. Now, what that means though, um, is that your batting may be hanging down onto the ground, right? So floating, like I said, means we're just loading the backing. It gives you a little bit more control of kind of rearranging things a little bit hand smoothing the batting on the top as you go, but they do drape off the front of the machine. All right. A batting hammock is a nice little, as you can imagine, hammock under the machine that holds that extra fabric and batting. And I recommend it because it does a couple of things. First, it prevents you from stepping or tripping on the quilt top or batting. Uh, but second, if you have a shop doggo like mine, who finds batting really soft and fun to play with, having a batting hammock will prevent you from ending up in a situation like this. Now, I was on live video when this happened. I was live on, I believe, YouTube. And I was talking about applique, talking about a, a fusible applique technique. We were having a wonderful time. And all of a sudden, one of my lovely rock stars types into the chat, I believe you should turn around and check on Havana. And I did turn around and check on Havana. And I found that she had done some combination of hiding slash losing her treat in the batting and trying to use the batting as a bed and had destroyed like full 25% of this queen size batting. It was a very sad day. And then I learned about batting hammocks. And I had, at this point, I had been long arming for four years and had never heard of a batting hammock. So you, my dear rock star, will be set up for success from day one to take care of your machine, to take care of your body, and also to take care of that batting that's draping down the front. All right, let's talk a little bit more about mindset with tip number four, practice makes progress, all right? It's not just the big quilting machine that can feel overwhelming. You might also feel a little bit overwhelmed by the act of quilting your quilts itself. Now, when I teach free motion quilting, I encourage my rock stars to doodle before they actually try stitching so they can focus on just one thing at a time. And I uh, suggest this similar skill separation if you are new to long arming, especially if you do not have a previous skill set of free motion quilting, all right? Separate your skills by doing things like first learn how to load a quilt on the long arm, right? Learn how to thread the long arm. Practice doodling some free motion quilting designs. Um, put those skills together by just simply loading some simple fabric and batting, not an actual quilt, right? Just big piece of fabric, batting another big piece of fabric, and threading up that machine and kind of semi-scribbling, semi-trying to make those free motion quilting motifs, right? 
Then once you've gotten a feeling for how the machine actually moves and works, you can start layering in skills like how to adjust your tension. So your stitches look really pretty. Actually understanding the shape of those quilting motifs so you can make your stitching look like something, right? So all of these skills can be layered on top of each other for practice to make progress. Remember the play thing? I really want you to keep that playful attitude in mind as you're doing this. This first time with your long arm um, is not really about finishing a project, right? It's just about starting to figure out how this thing works. Um, like I said, practice by doodling, trying a meander, loading that fabric on the frame and just kind of seeing what happens. Every long arm is a little different. It weighs slightly heavier or weighs less than a different long arm. Um, it might move more smoothly or a little bit more stiffly. Um, and so it's kind of like breaking in a new pair of shoes that you want to learn how it moves, learn what's comfortable and start to finesse your skills from there. Okay. Speaking of finessing skills, let's get down to the little bitty level and talk about taking care of the stitches that you're actually making by understanding how tension works. All right. Tension is very basic, right? We've got our top thread. We have our bobbin thread. The top thread runs through our machine, goes down to our needle. The bobbin thread simply comes up from the bobbin race. All right. These two stitches together or two threads form each stitch on the top of the quilt. You see the top thread on the bottom of the quilt. You see the bobbin thread. All right, and what happens is when that needle goes down, our bobbin race clicks twice and it twists those threads together, right? So if you were to be able to see stitches without the fabric in between, right, it would be fabric or thread, twist, thread, twist. And it's twisted twice so that the top thread stays on the top and the bottom thread stays on the bottom. That's why it has to, right? What can happen though is that tension can become imbalanced. Right, and if you've got scrunchy, funky looking things on the back of your quilt, we call that eyelashes, um, then that bottom thread is pulling too hard. This is a game of tug of war. We want the game of tug of war to be neutral, right? And if that bobbin thread is winning, then the top thread is gonna look all scritchy and scraggly and eyelashy on the back, right? If the top thread is winning, it's probably gonna break our thread, right? That's where you get random thread breaks, okay? So balancing your tension is all about making that game of tug of war between those two threads even, all right? And there's some recommendations I have for doing this on a long arm. First, I recommend using a Toa gauge. This is a handy little gadget uh, that you can put your bobbin case in and you wind the thread through and pull and it'll actually tell you in micro-newtons uh, how much resistance is on that thread as it's coming out of the bobbin case. Uh, this can be a little bit of an investment item. They run $75 to $120, kind of depending on where you get it, but it can absolutely save your sanity, okay? We do this first. We set the bobbin tension between 180 and 220 micronewtons. Don't worry if you didn't catch all those details right now. I'm just giving you a quick overview, right? We set it and forget it, right? Unless we have some issues that suggest that we should go back and check it again, all right? Um, then... We thread our top tension, all right, and make some stitches, and then we decide what we want to do to adjust the top tension. Once that bottom tension is set, we set it and forget it. We then are adjusting our game of tug of war only by pulling harder with our top thread or releasing with our top thread. And as I mentioned, if you're getting those eyelashes on the back, you're going to want to tighten the top thread so it pulls itself up towards the top and gives you crisp stitches front and back. If you're getting skipped stitches where you can see where the needle went down, but the top thread um, did not actually make individual stitches, or you're getting thread breaks, that means that top thread's pulling too hard and the bobbin thread can't do its job. So we're going to loosen the top tension a little bit. All right. So like I said, using a toe gauge is likely going to be new. And while you probably don't mess with the bobbin tension on your home machine, you are going to want to think about this for long arming. It's going to give you crisper stitches and make it easier to adjust your tension overall, all right? So our five tips taking care of the different aspects of what we're doing with long arming. Um, your machine is meant to be used. Recognize a hyperlapse video and realize that while they're fun to watch, that's not how you need to quilt. You need to quilt at the pace that is perfect for you and your journey, and that that's not necessarily the same as what's put on social media. And what's put on social media is probably heavily doctored to make it faster and a little bit more entertaining, right? 
prevent heartaches and possibly, you know, injuries, because we don't want any tripping, by getting yourself a batting hammock for your top and your batting. Understand that practice makes progress and that taking your skills one step at a time and layering those skills together is a really fabulous way uh, to work towards that big goal of finishing your quilt, all right? And finally, understand tension. Don't be afraid to touch that tension gauge. Don't be afraid to play around with it uh, and to really understand how it's working for your machine and adjust it to get those nice crisp stitches on the top and on the back, all right? Now, I know that we've covered a lot of information in a very short period of time. Don't be afraid to go back and review your notes, review this video. But right now, I want to go back to that long-arm dream. At the very beginning of our time, I, I shared with you that learning something new can feel kind of uncomfortable and challenging. And we can help make it feel worth it by putting a goal out in front of us that, man, if I could achieve that, it'd be worth the discomfort of learning this new skill. I want you to go back to that dream now. It's very possible that as I've shared all this information, you're like, oh, this is, this is going to be a journey, right? We got to remember what this journey is for, and it is absolutely worth it because you can and will be a long-arm quilting rock star no matter what your inner mean grump says, and you are going to make that dream come true. I'm going to cough. Hold on. <coughs> So <laughs> from here, you have two options. How are you going to become a long-arm quilting rock star? Option one, you can take to the Googles. There's a lot of resources on the internet for this, um, and you can fiddle around on your own. But if you've enjoyed having these five tips kind of broken down, these five key elements of learning how to long arm broken down and explained, then I would love to share with you uh, my proven teaching method for becoming a long arm quilting rock star. And that is inside my online course, Long Arm Preparatory. Long Arm Preparatory is a comprehensive introduction to long arm quilting. It will transform you from feeling scared of or overwhelmed by your long arm to confidently loading and quilting your own quilts in just a few weeks. Gail has taken long arm prep and she shared, I love the professionalism and teaching style of this course. Never in my wildest dreams had I thought I could do this, and this class has made my long arming fun. Pam says, I'm still a beginner with this new machine, but I've learned so much about confidence, and I can do it attitude and how to have fun. I've lost some of my fear of failure. Plus, I've made some beautiful motifs on a gorgeous panel. Thank you, Holly Ann, for your enthusiasm, patience, and for teaching this old dog new tricks. On to the next quilting plan. So Long Run Preparatory is an incredibly valuable course. It's going to take you step by step through all the key parts of learning how to long arm, plus show you how I actually quilted several different quilts from start to finish. So inside of Long Arm Prep, you get lifetime access to four units of quality video lessons. We include things like the supplies you need to long arm, the parts of your long arm, and most importantly, how to actually quilt something. I'm going to show you how to get balanced tension, master some first motifs, and then actually move from one part of the quilt to another in different types of quilting plans. It includes a newly expanded course workbook, including quick guides, doodle pages, and more. It really builds on that confident long arm quilting workbook I referenced at the beginning of our time together. All right. It includes a private Kajabi community with live Q&A times. That means that even though this course is pre-recorded, you'll have access to me to ask questions as you go through it because it's very important to me to make sure that you never feel stuck as you're learning how to quilt on your long arm. Plus, as an added bonus, we've included the Intro to FMQ mini course. I know there may be some of you who've made the investment into a long arm, but you have not done free motion quilting on your domestic before. So I'm going to help you bridge that gap and learn how to do that free motion so that you can do those hand-guided designs on your course. Now, this class is available for the tuition investment of 197 US dollars or three payments of $67. You can go to stringandstory.com forward slash long arm prep to enroll. <coughs> Pardon me. My allergies have been very bad. Uh, unfortunately, that's showing at the moment. Now, let's take a peek at those four video units that I referenced, right? We're going to have our introduction and orientation. That's going to talk about supplies and about how the course works. If you're new to taking online courses, that's going to be the section that just helps you get your bearings and know how to move through the course from there. All right. 
all of these units are going to be available to you right away. So you literally can be like, all right, today's the day I'm working on this long arm thing. And you can go straight through and follow along with me. Inside of unit one, we're going to talk about supplies and setup in detail. So exactly what we're going to be using, how to prepare for long arm and get our machine set up and ready to rock and roll. All right. In unit number two, we're going to actually get a quilt on that frame that is ready to quilt. In unit number three, we really break down tension. So I made reference to the TOA gauge, right? I'm going to show you exactly how to use that, exactly how to adjust your top tension. And we're going to talk about troubleshooting in detail uh, with all of those scenarios that I talked about of what to do if you're getting eyelashing, skip stitches, broken thread, et cetera. Then in unit four, I'm going to take you through several quilts an all over design, a semi custom quilting design, and a fully custom quilting design and show you step by step how I quilt those on the long arm, how I move back and forth from different parts of the uh, quilt and how I get that full finished effect at the end. All right. So basically start to finish, you're going to be set up for success. And again, that tuition is 197 US dollars or three payments of 67. And you can head to stringandstory.com forward slash long arm prep to enroll. Now, a few frequently asked questions about this course. Do you need a particular machine? You need a long arm quilting machine on a frame. So I'm going to be teaching on the Handy Quilter Moxie inside this course. Um, you can be working on any long arm on a frame. We do also have students inside the course working on hoop frames, um, though I do not teach you how to use the hoop inside this course. So just bear that in mind. You'll have fellow rock stars that can help answer questions. I'm talking about just a regular frame with leaders inside of the course. All right. So roller bars that roll back and forth. Uh, I also get asked, how is this co uh, course different than Free Motion Quilting Academy? So Free Motion Quilting Academy focuses on 30 hand-guided motifs for both domestic and long-arm machines. Inside Free Motion Quilting Academy, we do not talk about the actual mechanics of long-arming at all. This course is all about the mechanics of long-arming, how to get that long-arm uh, loaded, how to move your machine around. And then we talk a little bit about quilting motifs with that intro to FMQ bonus. All right. This course does not include computerized designs or pantographs. This is all about hand guided quilting. Um, and this does not talk about the business side of long arming. A lot of folks buy a long arm wanting to turn it into a business. This is the precursor to that. This is about actually learning how to use the machine. Um, and then I have other resources that I can recommend if you are ready to turn this into a business. All right. Lifetime access means that I know that you're very busy. So as I mentioned, these videos are going to be available right away. You can get started, you can work through at your pace, but there's not an expiration date on this, all right? So you can jump in and go and you can come back to these videos as often as you want or need to. Long Arm Preparatory allows you to learn to long arm from the comfort and privacy of your own home. It's ready when you are, regardless of geography or time zone with on-demand pre-recorded video lessons. And it connects you with other rock stars in training around the world so you can help and encourage each other. Deanna says, I loved all the positive encouragement from Holly Ann. Her enthusiasm made the journey so much fun. I was ready to give up and sell my long arm. <coughs> Excuse me. Sell my used long arm that I purchased. I came across this course and decided to give it one more try. I'm so glad that I did. Not only did I decide not to give up, I decided to upgrade to a new machine. I can't wait to continue my learning journey. Ann says, Nothing fancy on this table runner, but I'm very pleased to have moved beyond my fear of this big machine. Learning to float the top, solve tension issues, and move around has made all the difference. Thank you, Hack, for your patience and cheerleading. So, Rockstars, if you are ready, I would love to see you inside of Long Arm Preparatory. You can head to stringandstory.com forward slash long arm prep to get enrolled. You'll also be able to review all the details of the course on that page before you sign up. And I can't wait to see you on the inside. Thanks, Rockstars.